I don't have much to say about this chapter. It's good, but at the risk of providing inauthenticity, I'm just going to comment on the one thing from this chapter that I feel I have something to add on to. The final lines of this chapter are, still, I'm fond of the raptors, both the ones I've seen that never existed and the ones that existed but I've never seen. Computer-generated graphics are akin to magic. No further proof is necessary. A friend of mine looking to get into Lord of the Rings recently asked me whether he should start with the books or the movies, and the way he asked it struck me. Which tells the story right? When I read Lord of the Rings and get to the Prancing Pony and Brie, at times I'm imagining Peter Jackson's work. At times I'm thinking of the image that first popped into my head when I read it. Not Jackson's Brie, but something more akin to the beautiful maps of Baldur's Gate. The fantasy video games that introduced me to worlds such as these. And this game, it is December after all. Sometimes I'm thinking about works that reference the Prancing Pony, that reference hobbits and men and drink and songs and mischief and adventure and all of that. The more the time passes, though, the more I imagine things not in one singular way, but as a marriage between all the influences I have read, seen, heard, observed, or otherwise experienced. Frodo always looks like Elijah Wood to me, but the buildings of Bree are so much more vibrant and alive, even in the downpour in my head. So which is the right one? The Lord of the Rings by Peter Jackson, or the book by Tolkien? The story of the Lord of the Rings is not just both of those works, but all the works that come after it. Start wherever you like, but you won't know what the story is until you've seen a bit more of it. That's a good way to end this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on Friday.